so in this video we want to look at the tangent function. So we've looked at sine and cosine. We did introduce um, the definition of tan in the unit circle right back at the beginning. Um, but then since then we've been looking at graphs and equations just involving sine and cosine. And now what we're going to do is look at graphs and equations involving tan. We separate out tan because it behaves quite differently to sine and cosine. Um, and so it's best to sort of get on top of sine and cosine first and then introduce tan as an almost separate function later on. So let's just recall our definition of tan in the unit circle, remembering that tan is the y coordinate of the point on the tangent. Okay, so for example, if this angle here was, I don't know, I'm just, it's just, you know, let's say it's 30 degrees here, then this height here, this y coordinate would be tan of 30 degrees. Okay. So what we want to think about is, again, plotting out a graph of y equals tan of x. So let's think about, as we move our way around the unit circle, what are the values of tan? So obviously when the angle is 0, tan is the y coordinate of this point here at the tangent, and the y coordinate here is 0. So it goes through 0, 0. Okay, so then as we increase the angle, um, let's think about a, a fairly obvious value. Let's think about this value here when the angle is 45 degrees or pi on 4 radians. Okay, that's a nice easy tan value because when the angle is pi on 4 radians, the value of tan is 1. And that's because what we have here is an isosceles triangle where that length is going to be the same as that length. Okay, so therefore the tan value is 1. So at pi on 4, the value of tan will be 1. Then as we keep moving around the unit circle, so let's say when we have an angle of pi on 2 or 90 degrees, this line will never actually meet with this tangent. They don't meet at all. And so actually tan of pi on 2 is undefined. And so on the graph, what that's going to look like is our old friend the asymptote. So asymptotes, straight dashed lines labelled with equations. Okay. Then if we keep going around into the second quadrant, so let's say we're around here at tan of 3 pi on 4. Okay. So we know when we're calculating tan in the second quadrant we extend out our line down to meet with the tangent so it's the y coordinate of this point which would be negative 1 that is the value of tan. So at 3 pi on 4 be at negative 1. Okay. And we know that for example if the angle was smaller than somewhere between pi on 2 and 3 pi on 4 the tan value would be a big negative number. So it's going to have come from down here, the graph, it's going to be a big negative number when we're close to pi on 2, um, getting less and less negative. Alright, sorry, made a bit of a mess there. Right, let's go round to pi. So again, when we're round here in the second and third quadrants, we extend our line out so it meets with the tangent. So we're again looking at that point there, the y coordinate there being 0. So we go through pi 0. Alright, so then if we move around into the third quadrant, so let's go around here, say to 5 pi on 4. Again, we extend our line out through the first quadrant. So what we see is that tan of 5 pi on 4 is exactly the same as tan of pi on 4. And so um, 5 pi on 4 will also be 1. Okay, um, and then at 3 pi on 2, so around here, again it wouldn't matter if we extended our line out this way, regardless this line here is not going to meet with this tangent here, and so it's undefined, the value of tan is undefined, so on the graph we're going to have an asymptote, an asymptote, sorry, at 3 pi on 2. Um, and again around into the fourth quadrant, looking at perhaps 7 pi on 4 will be the y coordinate here. It's going to be exactly the same y coordinate as what we got at 3 pi on 4, so it should be exactly the same value on my graph, which is negative 1. Um, and then we can continue around to 2 pi, so we're back here again and the value of tan is 0. Okay, And we could think about it going the other way around, so again at negative pi on 4, so going this way, it'll be the same as at 7 pi on 4, which is the same as at 3 pi on 4, it'll be negative 1. Okay, we'll have an asymptote at negative pi on 2, when the angle is negative pi on 2, because tan is undefined at that point. And then when we go around into the third quadrant, so heading around in the negative direction into the third quadrant, so this is negative 3 pi on 4, that's going to be the same as tan of pi on 4, okay, which is 1. Um, and again we could um, 
sorry, I've lost track of where I'm at. Yep, and then we can continue around to negative pi, where again, around here, we extend the line out to meet with the tangent. So we're talking about that point there, the y coordinate of that point is zero. Okay, so it's a bit hard to see because we've only really got, and it might look like they're straight lines, but we'll have, I'll show you a video animation in a minute. But what actually happens if we join these up is we get, I possibly haven't chosen the best scale here, is we get, because I'm not able to get very close to the asymptotes, which obviously we would want to show usually. Let's try that again. Is we get a couple of features that we want to think about here. We get asymptotes, obviously, and we also get points of inflection along the x-axis. But I want to be clear that they're not like cubics. So when we draw a cubic graph, we get what we call a stationary point of inflection, where the gradient becomes zero for a moment and then the graph continues. So that would be y equals x cubed shape. Whereas this shape, we get a point of inflection. I'll talk about what the actual definition of that is, but it doesn't actually get flat at that point. Okay, so you shouldn't be drawing cubic shapes, it just should be a bend at that point. The definition of a point of inflection is if you were to draw the tangent of the graph at this point, so if I draw the tangent of the graph up here, the tangent's going to go somewhere like that. If I draw the tangent of the graph down here, the tangent's going to go something like that and sit completely above the curve. Okay, If I draw the tangent here, what will happen is the tangent will actually cut through the graph at that point. After that point, it will then sit below the graph at the point, and before that point, it will sit above the graph. Okay, so it'll sit above or it'll sit below. Um, but at that point, it'll actually cross through at that point, and that's actually technically the definition of a point of inflection. So these are all points of inflection, but unlike the cubic, we get a point of inflection where the gradient is actually zero. We don't actually have that with the tan graph. Okay. Um, so in terms of drawing this shape, obviously asymptotes, just like any graph, if I ask you to draw, for example, you know, a hyperbola, that I can't tell whether that's 1 on x or 2 on x or 3 on x, okay, unless I mark a point. Okay, so if I mark this as 1, 2, then I know that it's the graph of 2 on x. Same is true here, okay, I can't tell whether this is y equals tan of x or y equals 2 times tan of x unless I have a point, okay? So the most obvious point is this point here, okay? When x equals pi on four, y equals one. You don't need to mark that on every period, just one point is enough to indicate whether there's any dilation happening. We'll talk more about that down the track. Okay, let's just um, step away from the notes for a minute. I'll just show you an animation of that actually um, developing so that you can see what that graph um, how that graph kind of evolves out of the unit circle. It's, it's not quite as clear doing it by hand. So just let me pause for a second and get that video to show you. Okay, so um, we're looking here at this video. Hopefully we can um, see this. I'm just checking that it's within the recording window. Yes, you're slightly missing the top, but that's okay. Um, so here we've got our unit circle. The orange point in the unit circle is gonna track how the value of tan changes, and we'll see that plot out on the axis that we can see here. So if I play this, let's have a look. So as we move through the first quadrant, tan is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and you see it gets big quite quickly as we get closer to um, 90 degrees or pi on two. So, you know, for every degree change, the value of tan is changing by quite a lot, and so therefore the graph's getting quite steep as we approach um, pi on two. All right, for now it's just going to skip over pi on 2 because um, it's, I'll, I'll, I manually draw in the asymptotes later. But now what we're looking at is just past pi on 2, we have a very big negative tan graph, so tan um, value. So at the moment it's actually off the graph, um, but we'll see it start to appear on the screen in a moment if I, if I resume playing. So here it comes up towards, so 0 at pi. Um, and then round into the second quadrant, what we're seeing is exactly the same thing as what happens in the first quadrant happens again. And that's because of the way tan is defined. Um, you know, tan of pi plus theta is the same as tan of theta. So the, what happens in the third quadrant is the same as what happens in the first quadrant. And that's important when we talk about period in a minute. So um, we're going to see exactly the same picture, what we can see between zero and pi on two, we should see exactly the same picture between pi and three pi on two. So let's have a look. So yes, exactly the same, that first quadrant, so that first quarter of the graph and the next quarter. And then obviously we'll pass over 3 pi and 2 where the function's undefined, so there'll be an asymptote there. And then as we pass into the fourth quadrant, you can see we've got negative um, tan value 
and again it's the same as what happens between pi on 2 and pi. Okay, So we can see um, that's going to be our graph shape, we're adding in my asymptotes here. So we've got the full shape there. So I'm going to return to the notes but one of the key things I want us to be clear about is that if we What's happening between 0 and pi on 2 is exactly the same as what's happening between pi and 3 pi on 2. What happens between pi on 2 and pi is exactly the same as what happens between 3 pi and on 2 and 2 pi. And so when we talk about period of the tan graph, we don't need to go all the way from 0 to 2 pi to see one complete period. This graph completely repeats itself after just pi. Okay, so we only need to look between 0 and pi and we are seeing one complete period of the tan graph. So tan has a different period from sine and cosine, which is why we, one of the reasons we treat it quite separately. Okay, I'm just going to pause and go back to the notes. Okay, so back here, so as we saw in the video and as we would have seen actually as we, as we looked at um, creating the graph here, all we need to look, what's happening there between 0 and pi on 2 on my graph is exactly the same as what happens there. Oh, sorry, let's try this again. Exactly the same as what happens there between pi and 3 pi and 2. And that's because what happens as we travel around here in the unit circle for tan is exactly the same as what happens as we travel around there. Okay. Um, we also notice that what happens between pi on 2 and pi, so this purple section of the graph, is exactly the same as what happens between 3 pi on 2 and 2 pi and that's because what happens with tan as we travel um, from pi on 2 around to pi in the unit circle is exactly the same as what happens to tan as we travel from 3 pi on 2 around to 2 pi in the unit circle. So the point of this is that we actually don't need to look at one full lap of the unit circle to see one full period. We're seeing one full period happen between there and there. That's all we need to look at to then be able to just repeat, repeat, repeat and have the full graph. Okay, So the period of tan is pi, not 2 pi. So period of y equals tan x is pi. Okay, let's think about our transformations and applying those to the tan graph. Now, one, one other thing, sorry, before we do that is tan is not an oscillating function. Okay, It's not oscillating between two fixed values. Okay. And so, like sine and cos do, and so it does not have amplitude. Amplitude being the the distance that it moves away from the average, the central value up to the maximum, and then down to the minimum. So it doesn't have amplitude. It doesn't mean we can't dilate it from the x-axis, but it's just that that dilation from the x-axis won't change the amplitude. It will just stretch the shape of this graph in the same way that we can dilate a parabola and a cubic and all those other graphs from the x-axis. Um, okay, so applying all our transformations are the same. So the a value out the front is the dilation by a factor of a, and remember I include these modulus signs, meaning that it doesn't matter whether a is positive or negative, it's just the value of a that's the dilation factor. If a is, oh, sorry, I've got that around the wrong way again, we had a few errors with this, can we put that the other way around? If a is less than zero, so if a is a negative graph, um, negative value, sorry, then the graph will be reflected in the x-axis. So instead of going up and having an asymptote and then coming up, the graph would go down first, then have the asymptote and then come down. Okay. Um, the tan graph, if we change the value of n, the tan graph is dilated by a factor of 1 on n from the y-axis. So that means if we change n, if we make n bigger, we're making the period smaller but we're making the period smaller by a factor of 1 on n. And given that the original period was pi, the period of the tan graph becomes pi on n, 1 on n times pi. Okay? So sine and cos, the original period is 2 pi. You dilate by 1, by 1 over n from the y-axis, the period becomes 2 pi over n. The tan graph, the original period was is pi. You dilate that by 1 over n from the y-axis, the period becomes pi over n. Okay, so it's important that you're clear about the distinction. Um, again, I've got this inequality around the wrong way, my apologies. If n is less than 0, then the graph shape would be reflected in the y-axis. However, if you reflect the graph, this graph in the y-axis, um, you're just going to get uh, this graph, which is the same as what you get when you reflect in the x-axis. If I were to continue that pattern, it's the same as when we reflect in the x-axis. And so we don't really see this happening very much because if we want to reflect the shape we would just make a negative not n. The tan graph can be translated left or right by b units again 
plus a value moves to the left, minus a value moves to the right. The tan graph is translated up and down by C units, adding on a value at the end, the function moves it up, subtracting a value moves it down. Let's again just take a quick detour away from the notes and just have a quick look at, at that in action, and then we'll come back to working through the examples. Okay, so here we see the graph of um, a times tan of nx, sorry, a times tan of n times x plus b plus c. So we've got our four different transformations happening here. Um, this is the, so at the moment a is one, n is one, so no dilations. B is c, c, b is zero, c is zero, so no translations. Okay, so what we can see here is if we increase the value of a, we're going to, well, first of all, sorry, before I do that, we can see that our graph is um, going through this key point of pi on 4, 1. Sorry, it's hard, really hard to draw with this in this particular program. Um, and then obviously, if we dilate the graph from the x-axis, let's say by a factor of 2, so if I make a 2, that point will now be up there at pi on 4, 2. So marking that point is a really key indicator of what's the dilation of the graph. Okay, so obviously we can dilate it more. A also could possibly reflect the graph. So obviously if A was a fraction, it squashes down and that um, point of inflection does become flatter, but it won't ever actually become flat. Um, we'll just, if A is um, zero, it's not a tan graph, but if A is negative, um, our graph is going in the other direction. So it goes down first from the origin, then we have an asymptote, and then it comes down after that asymptote. So we have constant negative gradient um, with a uh, reflected tan graph, whereas the regular tan graph has positive gradient everywhere. Um, okay, so that's playing with A. If we play with N, N is about changing the period. So at the moment, the period is pi. Um, so from 0 to pi, we're seeing one full picture of the graph. Um, and then if we increase the value of n, we're dilating by, so let me make it a whole number. Here we're dilating by half from the y-axis by making n 2. And so the period now is pi on 2. So now we're seeing that one complete period happening between 0 and pi on 2. If we were to, sorry, let me make n smaller. If we were to make n... Um, half, we're now dilating by 1 over a half, which is dilating by 2 from the y-axis, and so the period is being doubled, it goes from being pi to being 2 pi, okay? And so we're seeing that one complete period. Alright, if I make n back to 1, um, translations left and right work in the same way, sorry, there we go. Um, so changing the value of b, um, so I've set the step size here to, it looks a bit ugly, but it's actually pi on 12. So every time I hit the um, up or down arrow, it will move by pi on 12. So we've set the function up as x plus b, which means if I make b bigger, the graph's going to go to the left. Obviously the asymptotes translate to the whole shape translates to the left. No dilation, it's not changing its shape at all, it's just moving left. If I make a negative, a b negative, sorry, so it's x minus a number, we know the graph will go to the right. And obviously, you know, we can translate the graph far enough that the asymptote actually happens at the y-axis. The graph looks kind of different, but you should be able to still pick out that standard tan period. You could translate the graph enough that actually um, you've translated it by a whole period and now it just looks like the original tan graph again. Okay. All right, so left and right, and then up and down. Um, so we can change the value of C, moving the graph up and down is simply going to move essentially where that point of inflection happens, where that sort of x-axis mark happens, which is where those points of inflection happen. Um, and they would be sort of um, key points that I'd be, you know, plotting out to get my shape right. Okay, so obviously we can combine all four of those things, um, reflection, well, I guess reflections, dilations, um, and translations are three things, um, but we've got the four different numbers that can, in the equation that can control what's happening. Okay, let's go back over to the notes and work um, through the examples. Okay, so actually before we get on to the examples, I want to be cle really clear about what one complete period of tan looks like. So in the same way that I like to talk about, you know, being very careful and, and planning carefully. So you only need, so your period, let's say we're starting our period at the y-axis here, halfway along the period is where you'll have the asymptote. Okay, 
So you want to obviously mark in your asymptote. They're really key features, but you need them in so you can draw the shape correctly. Okay. So if this value here is your period, whatever that is, whether it's pi, 2 pi, pi on 2, pi on 3, whatever it is, then this will be, the equation of your asymptote will be x equals half of your period. Okay. Um, and then if I'm going to plot in my tan shape, my key feature, my key point that enables me to show the dilation has a y coordinate of 1 if the x coordinate is 1 quarter of the period. Okay, And so therefore if my graph is dilated by 2, the y value there will be 2. If it's dilated by 5 from the um, x-axis, that will be 5. If it's reflected and dilated by 3, the y value will be negative 3 and the graph, the point would be down here. Okay, So it's important that we just mark that one point just in the first period just to be clear. So that will be a quarter of the way along the period. So that means if the period is pi, the asymptote is at pi on 2, the coordinates of the point is pi on 4, 1. Okay, That's the standard tan graph. If the period was 2 pi, for example, the asymptote would be x equals pi and the point would be pi on 2, 1. Okay. If the period was pi on 2, then the asymptote would be at x equals half of that, which is pi on 4, and the coordinates of this point would be at a quarter of pi on 2, which is pi on 8, 1. Okay. If your period was at, let's say, was, let's say 2 pi on 3, then your asymptote would be at pi on 3, which is half of 2 pi on 3, and your um, point would be at half again, so pi on 6. Okay. So really thinking through that, that key, um, really thinking through that period, and again it's helpful to divide, to divide your period into quarters, okay, in terms of scaling your axis. And again I would encourage you to get one period right without any horizontal translations and then move the graph to the left or right if you need to. So if you then need to translate everything across by something, you then move all those points. Okay, get one period right and then you can just follow the pattern for the rest of your graph. Okay, so let's work our way through some examples. Sketch the graph of negative 2 tan of 3x. Okay, so let's first of all think about the shape because we've got a reflection in the x-axis here. So the shape is going to go down first because of the reflection. We've got a dilation by 2 from the x-axis. Okay, so it's not about amplitude, but we do need to think about it because our, our graph does need to reflect that that has happened. Our period so our graph has been dilated by one third from the y-axis, which means the period, which is usually pi for tan, is now a third of pi, so the period is pi on three. We're going to sketch the graph over this domain, zero to pi, which means we're going to see three complete periods. All right, so let's plot things out. Again, let's focus on getting one period right. Well, I said, you know, scaling um, using a quarter of the period um, is helpful. Technically with tan you, you can get away with you actually only need half the period for your asymptote. Okay so I'm going to divide this into thirds. I'll try and do that vaguely accurately. Probably let's try there and there. It's close enough I think. Okay so that's pi on three um, and that's two pi on three. So let's just focus on one period. 0 to pi on 3, there's our one period. Okay, So our graph is going to start, sorry, so first of all halfway along the period is where we're going to have our asymptote. So halfway here, half of pi on 3 is pi on 6. So x equals pi on 6, equation of the asymptote. It's reflected so it's going to go down, okay, and again, we don't want to get this, we don't want to be sort of suggesting that we've got um, stationary points, or sorry, zero gradient. So we just want it to, to bend, not to actually um, become flat at the end there. Um, okay, so there's one complete period. And now all I need to do is repeat this. So between pi on 3 and 2 pi on 3, I'm going to see exactly the same thing. So halfway along, I'm going to see an asymptote. 
halfway in that next period, I'm again going to see an asymptote. Okay. What I've now done is divided my axis into sixths of pi. So this is 1 pi on 6, two, so this will be 3 pi on 6, which simplifies to pi on 2 for the second asymptote. 4, 5 pi on 6 will be my third asymptote. Okay, so straight dashed lines labelled with equations. I'm going to get rid of that. That was my first period, and now I should just be able to repeat. So my graph is now going to continue down this way. So I should be seeing the same shape here and here. Okay. Um, and then again, I should be seeing the same shape here and here. Okay. So asymptotic behaviour, don't make it flat at that point. Same shape again. Okay, let's have endpoints, intercepts. Y intercept is an endpoint and an X intercept. Asymptotes labelled with our, equ our equation. Now let's just mark that one key point on. I'm just going to do it in the first period. So it should be a quarter of the way along the period. And in this case, the Y coordinate of that point will be negative 2. It's been reflected in the x-axis, which has made the y-coordinate negative and stretched away from the x-axis by a factor of 2. So the y-coordinate of this point is negative 2. The x-coordinate should be a quarter of the way along the period. So half the period, pi on 6 was the asymptote. Half that again, pi on 12, will be the x-coordinate of this point. You don't need to mark the same point on the next period and the next period. Just one is enough to indicate that we've got a dilation of two happening here on this graph. Okay. Otherwise, without it, there's nothing to say that your graph isn't y equals negative tan of 3x. Okay. There's nothing to say that this 2 is happening here. So there has to be some indication. In the same way that if I ask you to draw 2x squared, you don't just draw that. You need to give me a point here that says that this is 2x squared as opposed to x squared or 10x squared. All right, so we've got everything there. Um, asymptotes with equation, everything is done. Okay, example two, we're going to solve an equation. Process for solving is the same as it is for sine and cos functions. Get the tan on its own. Use your exact values to determine what's the reference angle. Use your symmetries to understand with quad which quadrants your solutions are in. And then think about your domain in order to find the required solutions. Okay, so let's get the tan on its own. So it's going to be, um, we're going to divide both sides by 4. So we get tan of 3x is going to be equal to negative 1. And we divide by 4. We then need to know our exact values. When does tan equal 1? Well, that happens in this triangle when the angle is pi on 4. Okay? Because opposite divided by adjacent is 1. So pi on 4 is our reference angle. But tan is equal to a negative value, and so we need to think about where tan is negative in the unit circle, and that is in the second and fourth, sorry, oh, my apologies, bumped my external mouse, uh, second and fourth quadrants. Okay, so remembering that our tan value is all to do with the y coordinate of this point, and the y coordinate at this point is negative 1. All right, so that's the location of our solutions. So pi on four up from there and pi on four down from there. Okay, now we wanna find solutions between negative pi and pi, but they're solutions for x. And before we get solutions for x, the solutions out of the unit circle are going to be equal to three x. Okay, so we need to think about what is the domain for three x. Okay, so we're gonna get solutions equal to three x and then we'll divide them all by three. So down here at this point, we want x to be between negative pi and pi, which means we want 3x to be between negative 3 pi and 3 pi. Okay, so let's, again, I find it easier to find the positive solutions first, then go back to um, zero and find the negative solutions. So let's think that through. So let's think about our positive solutions. So if I start at zero and I lap around to pi, Again around to 2 pi, and again another half lap around takes me to 3 pi. We find three solutions. The first solution there is at pi minus pi on 4. Okay, I'm going to try and list in order, so I'll leave space for the negative solutions. Uh, pi minus pi on 4 is 3 pi on 4. My next solution around here 
is at 2 pi, 2 pi minus pi on 4. So 2 pi is 8 pi on 4, so that will be 7 pi on 4. And then my third positive solution is around here at 3 pi minus pi on 4. So 3 pi is 12 pi on 4, minus pi on 4 is 11 pi on 4. So that's my positive solutions. Okay, let's uh, think through our negative solutions. Ah, sorry, just trying to avoid that. Um, let's think about our negative solutions. Alright, I might just have to leave that purple cross there. Yep, okay, we'll ignore that. Because um, we've also lost the unit circle. So let me draw in my circle again. My apologies. Okay, so negative solutions. We're going to start at zero and we're going to go in the opposite direction around to negative pi, around to negative 2 pi, and then back around again to negative 3 pi. And again, we find three negative solutions. The first of them is at 0 minus pi on 4, so that's negative pi on 4. The next of them is at negative pi minus another pi on 4. So we're getting more negative, so it's negative 4 pi on 4 minus 1 more pi on 4 is negative 5 pi on 4. And then around again, negative 2 pi is negative 8 pi on 4 minus another pi on 4. So negative 8 pi on 4 minus pi on 4 is negative 9 pi on 4. Okay, so we've got six solutions, um, three negative and three positive. Now we're going to need to divide, and they're all between negative 3 pi and 3 pi, so that when we divide them all by 3, they'll all be between negative pi and pi, which is what we need. So dividing them all by 3 will make all of the denominators 12. You'll then need to simplify fractions if you prefer to simplify them as you go. Sorry, 12. I'm going to go on to the next line here. 3 pi on 12. 7 pi on 12 and 11 pi on 12. Simplifying, so a couple of these aren't in simplest form. 3 is a common factor there, 3 is a common factor there. So let's list them all out properly. So minus 3 pi on 4, minus 5 pi on 12, minus pi on 12, pi on 4, 7 pi on 12, and 11 pi on 12. And there we have our six solutions to that equation. Again, we can confirm that. Let's just check that we're right. So solving with our CAS, our original equation was 4 times... Oh, sorry. I'm having a bit of trouble with my accuracy of my touch screen at the moment. Um, 4 times tan of 3x is equal to negative 4. And we want to solve that for x and we'll need a domain restriction if we don't want the general solution. So if we want specific values. So from negative pi. To pi. And there we get our solutions. Negative 3 pi on 4, negative 5 pi on 12, negative pi on 12, pi on 4, 7 pi on 12 and 11 pi on 12. Correct. Alright, example 3 here. Let's have a look at solving another equation. So solve 3 times tan of 2x equals root 3. Okay, again, let's focus first of all on getting the tan on its own. So let's divide by 3. So we're going to have tan of 2x is equal to root 3 on 3. Now remembering root 3 on 3 is the same as 1 on root 3, if depending on how you've remembered and learned your exact values. So, um, 1 on root 3, thinking through my exact values, I know that's going to come from this triangle where we have 1 root 3 and 2. So if I need tan to equal 1 over root 3, it means this has to be the opposite side and this has to be the adjacent side. And so therefore we must be talking about this angle up here, which is half of 60 degrees, 30 degrees, which is pi on 6. So pi on 6 is our reference angle. Tan is equal to a positive value, so our solutions are going to be in the first and um, third quadrants where tan is positive. Okay, so pi on 6 up here and pi on 6 down here. Um, okay, so then we want to think about domain. Um, so remembering the solutions out of our unit circle are all going to be equal to 2x. So 
we need to think about where do we need to find the solutions in the unit circle. So 2x will be equal to whatever and then we'll divide them all by 2. So if we need x to be between 0 and 2 pi, we're going to therefore need 2x to be between 0 and 4 pi so that then we have all the right solutions. So we'll do two complete laps of the unit circle to find all our solutions. So let's start at 0, one lap around to pi, the next lap around to 2 pi, around again to 3 pi, and then around to 4 pi. So we get 1, 2, 3, 4 solutions. The first solution is 0 plus pi on 6. The next solution is pi plus pi on 6, so that is 7 pi on 6. The next one is 2 pi plus pi on 6, 2 pi is 12 pi on 6, plus another pi on 6 is 13 pi on 6. And the final one is 3 pi plus pi on 6, 3 pi is 18 pi on 6, plus another pi on 6 is 19 pi on 6. Because of the way tan is defined in the unit circle, you'll see that the diff distance between each of the solutions is pi. So once you get your first solution, add pi gets you the next one, add pi gets you the next one, etc. So here, if we just add pi, add pi, add pi, we get all our solutions. Okay, um, And that's because of the, the symmetry of tan in the circle. Okay, They're always going to be pi apart. Um, and then finally, we just need to divide everything by 2, which means writing each of these fractions over 12, pi on 12, 7 pi on 12, 13 pi on 12, and 19 pi on 12. Given that 24 pi on 12 would be 2 pi, 19 pi on 12 is clearly within that domain, and pi on 12 is clearly um, bigger than 0, so it's also within the domain. So we have all our required solutions. Uh, okay. Let's do one more sketch. So let's sketch the graph of y equals 4 times tan of x plus 4 between negative pi and pi. Okay, so our shape, there's no reflection. So the shape is going to start by going up, and we have our asymptote, and then it will come up. So no reflection. We do have a dilation by a factor of 4 from the x-axis. So that's going to stretch out that key point. Okay, so instead of pi on 4, 1, it'll be pi on 4, 4. And then we're also going to go up by 4. There's no period change. Um, so the period remains at equal to pi. Okay, so for a tan graph, half of the period is the sufficient scale, quarter of the period's nice, so maybe we'll divide into pi on 4. Um, we want to go from negative pi to pi which means we're going, that's a span of 2 pi, which means we'll see two complete periods. Okay, so let's have negative pi. Let's have the same kind of distance over here. So maybe about there, pi. I'm going to divide that into half and half again, just to help me with key points. So I'm dividing it by 4. Okay, let's focus on getting one period right and then we can just continue the pattern to the next period. Okay, so the first period um, hasn't gone left or right at all, so we don't need to worry about that. So we're going to start at zero, we're going to finish at the end of the period, which is at pi. Halfway along the period is where we'll have an asymptote. So let's draw that in. x equals pi on 2. Our shape hasn't been reflected, so we go up first. Okay. And we come up from the asymptote, the x-intercept. In terms of this, oh, I forgot to go up by 4. My apologies. All right, let's just move. I can do this nice and easily. I'm just going to move that down. All right, let me just fix up that asymptote. Okay. Okay, so our graph has gone up by 4. So again, I'm going to draw myself in a rough pencil line to give me an idea of where that is. So then I can treat this line essentially like my x-axis. Okay, So that line is y equals 4. Let me just make that slightly straighter than that if I can. Do it the other way. Okay. 
That'll do. Okay, so my graph actually isn't going to start down here. My graph is going to start here and finish at the end of the period here at that central value. Okay, it then goes, it goes up from here. Okay, and it's going to come up from here, which means it's going to cross the x-axis. So before I draw it in, I'm going to work out where it should be crossing the x-axis. So let's solve the equation first, um, so we know where it is, and then we'll get, um, then we'll see where we go. So x-intercepts, we need y to equal 0, 4 times tan of x, sorry, let me just move over, plus 4. So first thing is to get the tan on its own. So we're going to subtract 4 and then divide by 4. So tan of x is equal to negative 1. Okay. Exact value is um, pi on 4. Pi on tan of pi on 4 is 1. Quadrants. Tan is negative. So we're looking at here and here. Okay. Um, again, domain's less relevant because we can see the picture, but um, we, we want negative pi to pi, um, which means... We want to go from negative pi around here to pi around here. So that's 0 there. So this solution here is at 0 minus pi on 4. So that's negative pi on 4. And the second solution in the third quadrant around here is at pi minus pi on 4. So that's 3 pi on 4. Okay, so that's going to be our two x-intercepts within the domain. So we do want to make sure then that our graph actually crosses here at that point. Okay, so I might just move that down a little bit more just so I can get a bit more shape with my tan graph. Okay, so we're going to have an asymptote and then we're going to head towards that point there which is an endpoint at pi 4. Now because I've got an x-intercept, sorry that's 3 pi on 4, that's a point on my graph. So I don't need to mark my other point Okay, you can if you want, you can work out where it would go. It would be here at, um, it would have been at um, pi on 4, 1. It's been dilated by um, 4 from the x-axis, so it would have been at pi on 4, 4. And then the graph's also gone up by 4, so it would actually be at pi on 4, 8. Okay. But you don't need that point because you've got a point on the graph through this x-intercept. Okay. Um, Y-intercept there is at 0, 4. And then we should be able to continue the pattern. Okay, so next period, um, halfway along the period, is where we'll have an asymptote. So that's at x equals pi negative pi on four. Sorry, negative pi on two. And I lost this one here. Um, we've worked out our other x-intercept is going to be at negative pi. That's that there. That makes sense if we continue to follow the shape down from here, and then coming down from here. Okay. So there's going to be my shape. Endpoint is at negative pi 4. So endpoints, y-intercept, x-intercepts, and asymptotes, all labelled with the equation. So here, because we've got, you know, at least two points on our graph that show the dilation, we don't need an additional point on top of that. Okay. The other thing I want to note that I should have mentioned earlier, actually, when you think about a tan graph, um, and this is true of all graphs, not just this one, the distance between, so remember we've talked about the period is how much the width of the window that you need to look at to see one complete um, one complete picture of the graph. So we've been seeing a standard tan period as being that. Okay. Um, however, you can, as long as you, so in this case the period is pi, as long as you look at, if I were to say, for example, pick this point, if I were to then move pi further on from here, that would also be one complete period. So for example, just starting from there and finishing there with an asymptote not in the middle, that's a period. You're seeing everything you need and you can then just repeat that. Okay, so one of the key things that can be helpful in a number of situations is the fact that the distance between the asymptotes is also a complete period. Okay, so um, sometimes that can be a helpful thing to think through. Okay, I think that's the end of the examples for TAN. Yep. So exercise 14L, you're going to practice sketching some TAN graphs and solving equations involving TAN. And obviously some of your graph sketching will require you to solve equations, combining together those two things.